Hey guys, so I'm going to continue to go through all the dungeons that I have not uploaded a commentary for. So this is a 19 mists that I did a random pug for. I don't remember why I did this one. Maybe I guess I just wanted to practice more shadow and higher keys. So this first pack here, you mass spell their buff. Their buff basically debuffs you with a curse when they die that curse makes it so you take more damage so there have been times where we would pull these into the next group and leave that buff up so the thing is it also debuffs enemy mobs so when they die it would debuff the soul cleavers and the tree and whatever the fuck um but the thing is if the tank gets the debuff then you need to dispel it off as well as maybe any melee that get it as well so that can make the pull a little bit tricky. Um, I don't think, I have I have not double pulled very often just because the pull is fairly challenging and uh, just needs to be executed very well. So for this one, the villager of course has that, um, that conal. So on fortified, I would say, so this is tyrannical, but um, on fortified, if that tree is channeling on you, use a cooldown. Um, I will always disperse that, it hits pretty hard and I try to move closer to melee when that happens because afterwards you become a little seed pod thing and people need to break, break you out with damage. Um, for the soul cleavers, definitely try to make sure you interrupt their soul bolt casts through silence and stuns. But yeah, so, oh, okay. Oh, this is bolster, that's why. I was like, wow, that channel is still hitting me pretty hard. But yeah, I use dispersion. Um, if you are getting channeled then you don't have dispersion, you can use Desperate Prayer and also just heal yourself, prevent yourself from dying, healing pots, everything. Um, also, you traditionally skip the pack we just did using Mind Soothe. Rogues can sap. Um, I think Demon Hunters sometimes also cage as well, but stuff like Polly, I believe, would pull the pack. So you want to use alternate methods. For this group, that Harvest Essence cast can hit pretty hard, so I don't know if I do it in this run, but make sure that you're standing relatively close, that way you can AoE interrupt those casts, because you can see these guys are channeling a lot. They, they cast pretty frequently, so you want to make sure that you interrupt as many of those. This pack is pretty um, challenging on Fortified, for sure. Um, a lot harder than i'm used to thinking i guess so there's two different ways that people usually do this you can sometimes get the mushrooms first and um, mind soothe both mobs just so you can get through without pulling them or we can get them later uh i don't really know if i prefer anything but the thing is that i have noticed is that when you eat a mushroom it heals you to full i don't know if it's always 100 percent. it could just be a very high um high amount that makes it so it feels full but anyways for these guys i am okay so good i went back to skull never dps these guys equally that thrash it's hard this is tyrannical so it's hitting like a joke right now but on fortified it is not a joke he will wipe if you have two of those furious thrashing things going off at the same time so don't let that happen um, it's a very simple and easy thing to avoid, so to wipe because you guys couldn't, like, are randomly killing them evenly is just bad. So you can see how even just one bolster, eh, it, it's, it's still hitting pretty hard. I am actually going to be very curious to see if I fucked up my cooldowns here, but I don't think I did, actually. So the thing is, I used my cooldowns on the start of this pull, and... Yeah, I think it's very likely that I'm going to get both PI and obviously I will get Void Eruption up before the boss becomes vulnerable. Um, that is extremely important for us to have cooldowns for that part. Do not use your cooldowns on the tree. And I'm just going to start talking about the boss actually because prides are pretty typical by now. So this boss, all right. Let's talk some strategy because there's a lot of things that I've seen DPS do on this boss that make no fucking sense. Um, this boss on Tyrannical, for some reason, 
has managed to be really difficult for people and it's kind of sad to me. Hmm. So yeah, really what sad. happens? The tree uses tears of the forest and that drops blue pools where you're standing. You control where those puddles go. So something that I do like to tell people, especially on Tyrannical, ideally ranged want to stay in the same side and kind of like inch across together, right? This is kind of like a clock, right? So say we are hugging the far left side of the wall and we just gradually inch to the right after dropping these puddles. That would make it so much cleaner instead of having all this blue shit everywhere. But one of the most important things on this boss that you want to pay attention to, first off, you want to have an interrupt rotation for the boss, for Spirit Bolt. And that thing hits people for maybe like 40% of their health, maybe more since it's tyrannical. But also it will help move him out of standing in the blue shit. And um, yeah, sometimes if he's standing in there, then melee can't use their interrupt on him. But what I was talking about is one of the most important things you can do for this boss as DPS. Never, ever, ever, ever stand in front of a puddle. So what he casts is a fear. How, do fear How does a fear work? For this boss, it only works one way. You run away from the boss. So if you position yourself in between um, a puddle and the boss, then you're always going to run backwards into that puddle. You should never, ever, ever take puddle damage on this boss because during the fear, Embrace Darkness is usually out, so you're taking dot damage, and the puddles will do a decent amount of damage, and they can kill you, and unless you have a defensive up, you're going to die because the healer can't heal you. They're feared as well, but that is really not a hard mechanic. The main thing that makes it hard is just because of how little space there is to stand, but I will also say... As DPS, it is your job, your job, to move closer to the healer. There have been times where I'm healing DPS and I'm putting myself in dangerous situations because they're getting low. If you are low, you need to find a way to move closer to your healer. Don't make them come to you because if they die, it's way worse than if you die. Um, but yeah, I do think that for this boss, it's worth um, cleaning it up where ranged will be on the same side because yeah if you guys all spawn puddles on the same side and you gradually move together then you're always going to be in range of each other but if people are standing in fucking god knows where um then as puddles keep forming then it's easier for you to outrange your healer because there's so little space to stand and you're just trying to like find whatever open area you can stand in so Whenever you see me dropping these puddles, I always sidestep them for the most part. Sometimes I will just like stand behind them, but sidestepping them is just fine with me because that means that there's generally never going to be a puddle behind me if I'm moving sideways. Never move in front of it, like I say, but um, something that I have considered trying that most likely a thousand percent does not work is shadow or deathing the fear because they did nerf how much damage... Um, uh, well, actually, I'm not sure, but I just remember throughout the time of fear, it used to never break easily at all. I remember those fucking BC days where warlocks would have like all their dots on you and they would fear you and you're just fucking running away, <laughs> not breaking out. But um, I don't know how much they have changed it. But yes, fears do seem to break fairly easily now. But for a boss mechanic, I guess you probably can't say the same. So um on Tyrannical, this boss just does get very, very messy because of all that garbage on the ground, and I think we kill him here, so it should be okay. But um, yeah, placement of puddles and your positioning and where you stand. Sorry, my uh, stream just fucked up. Extremely, extremely important. This boss is not hard. You just have to position yourself well and definitely coordinate interrupts. But um, this run went... Surprisingly well, we weren't using Discord, it's just like a random pug. And I think... Okay, so nobody pulled the mobs from the side. Um, this is pre 9.0.5. So in 9.0.5, they made it more difficult to pull the mobs from the side. 
I think there's some trick you can do with like fucking boomkin flap or something, but in this one they chose not to pull it ahead of time. So uh, for the maze, um, I just don't, I don't do the maze. I did have the weak aura for it previously, but it stopped working for some reason. Like it was definitely not reliable. It was really strange because there were times where I was not interacting with it at all and it was failing out on its own. So I was like, oh, I don't actually need to press anything. But okay, let's talk about these mobs because they're very, very, very important. So the stalker, there are two stalkers in there. The stalkers cast a mist veil bite and it's actually good for me to see how long the cast is because the cast is actually not as fast as I thought. So bite on fortified is... It's tough. So when they bite you, too bad I don't see him doing it again. But I would say for the most part, bite will chunk you. Bite will hit for, let's say, 50 to 60% of your health. So as a healer, I always try to make sure people are topped off for any group that has a stalker in there. Because if they are topped off, then even if they get the bite and it chunks them, they won't die immediately. Um, the bite should be interrupted ideally from DPS, so it can't be interrupted, but you can still, uh, fear it, stun it, gouge it, whatever. So ideally you should do that. And if you do that, I believe it puts the cast on an, an internal GCD, so they won't be able to cast it immediately again. Something else that I mentioned in my discipline priest video is that the stinger, the stinger applies a debuff. And that should, I don't even know what the fuck it does, but you just dispel that off because why the fuck not? Um, I always, as a healer, I always put the stinger on focus just so I know who to dispel. Um, this Miss Veil Bite is also a bleed, so if I have file, then I will file it off. Okay. Oh, and I guess also another thing, the Guardians, I think, they are the ones. They're the ones that cast that, yeah, Bucking Rampage. If I was standing closer i would definitely be fearing that cast that way it doesn't fuck with melee being in there because while that's going off they can't even be in the area um tenders definitely need to be interrupted i believe tenders are the ones that cast the root so the root is actually pretty scary um if it applies on everybody then it's you get rooted and then there's also a dot that happens during it Yes, you can mass dispel it off, but um, the likelihood of everyone getting massed off is pretty unlikely because this is a pretty big room. People won't be standing uh, in a place where mass will reach everyone. But definitely, those mobs are actually pretty challenging. I, I actually don't think mist is as easy as um, I used to think. I used to think this was the easiest dungeon and I don't, I feel like if you know all of these mechanics, it might not be the hardest to execute, but that's always just talking in a sense where you expect everyone to perform things perfectly and that's just not going to happen. Things will go wrong and you need to, uh, need to figure out the best way to handle it. This guy, um, it's it sucks when you get uh, oh my god I think okay <laughs> one of the runs that I did in this I think the tongue fucked me up and uh, I think it's I was like standing on the side in the front but to the side and I think maybe it has a bit of a cone to it so his fucking tongue just whipped out and smacked me and I died um okay yeah no he's not smacking anybody right now. But it does feel bad when you get pride and then you get the single mob and it's just like, ooh, I could be doing so much damage, so much more damage with my cooldowns if it was a multi-pack like this. So, okay. All right. From watching this over, I'm able to pay attention more to um, what... Sorry, there's people outside my house. I'm able to pay attention to the distribution of mobs because I never look at this ever. I just tab dot and I just channel and whatever the fuck. But actually another thing that I do think is worth mentioning is 
Um, I would say the stalkers are highest priority because I actually think the bite is the worst cast out of all of these. The tenders always need to be interrupted, but that's the thing. You should always have an interrupt ready for them to rotate on because there's like nothing else to really interrupt cast wise. Everything else is stunned in order to interrupt. So like the bucking rampage, that's not a cast you interrupt, you disorient them or like you stun them to stop it. Same with the stalker. Um, the anima injection from the stinger is a joke because you just dispel it off. So focus down the stalker for sure. Get that guy out of the way and then you don't have to worry about the bites anymore. Um, this boss is really not that bad. You just have to really be aware of this fox. Um, you should pretty much never get hit by it. You should always have CC on it. And I don't think this should really be a problem because... Well, I'm assuming that druids can entangling root spam on anything, right? Like they used to. So like if if the fox is running around and there's a druid around, I'm kind of wondering like what's going on. Well, I'm assuming from a resto druid. I don't know anything about fucking boomkins anymore. I don't know how much of those utility utility spells they keep. Um, but yes, also another thing during this um, ad phase I try to make sure that I position my camera always where I can see the boss in front of me. So even if they first spawn and um, I usually wait for somebody to tell me which illusion it is. I don't spend time using my brain to figure it out. So I just wait. But at the same time, I keep the boss in front of me because he will manage to do those um, dodgeballs. And you just really don't want to get hit by those like yeah these mechanics aren't really that bad so you just need to focus and pay attention um if they spawn right next to me well I did not fear it this time but I do usually oh did I not okay I, I not. yeah I trusted and they did manage to get it off but uh also as the tank I'll just mention this because I've seen an instance before see how yeah I turned my camera a little bit to look at the boss okay I'm just randomly donning things until they figure it out um, but yeah, I've seen instances where the tank is trying to figure out the symbols and then they miss a patty cake interrupt. So, uh, yeah, maybe if, if that happens, let the DPS or the healer worry about it because really as the tank, your job is just to stay alive. You don't need to, uh, worry about these other things, especially if there's a mechanic that you end up missing that's actually, uh, uh, what do you call it? Just... If you die, it's very, very bad. And uh, just because you're looking at some symbols. And if you can't multitask them, don't, don't worry about it. Um, it's also better to stand closer to the boss because it's easier for you to tell where the arrows are pointing out towards. Obviously, if you're standing further away, the balls fan out more. So, yeah, like you see those three on the left? Those arrows are really close together. Obviously, you don't want to stand ultra close to those. But yeah, just the closer you are, the easier you're able to see the exact placement of them. And then you're able to position yourself a little better. A, li <laughs> a little better. Um, also for the ads, uh, I did not use it for this fight. But you should pretty much always have... Oh my god, I feared it. No, I did not. I'm bad. I'm bad. There's literally no excuse for that. I had fear up. And I'm bad. But um, yeah, always use VE for the, um, for the ads, at least one of those phases. If you happen to have your cooldown for the ad phase, hmm, see my trinket. no. Actually, I was going to say that um, I would use my cooldowns on the ad, but no, I don't really think it's worth it. It's only worth it if... So for some reason you guys are taking a shit ton of damage and usually that means that you guys are failing at looking at the symbols so um yeah actually no using your cooldowns on the ad is kind of a waste oh, in my well i don't fuck ignore me i don't know what i'm saying um okay so the good thing is i recently wanted people to confirm for me which of these guys are worth interrupting because um these were just some of the packs that I wasn't really as focused on or paying attention to, so I wasn't as familiar on which 
which ones need to be interrupted. So it's only the staghorns. Those are the only ones that need to be interrupted. They have simulate resistance and then they have the re regeneration. Both of those are things you need to interrupt. I believe you cannot stun them because I have tried. I don't even know if you can fear them. I don't know if I've tried that before. I'm assuming you can't fear them though if you can't stun them because those are both CC things. Uh, yeah, let's see. What does my VE get up to? With absolutely no cooldowns. Lines, but this is okay. Eh, 1k ish. I got a little bit high up at 1.6, but. Um, in this run, I am definitely running Misery and Link. And I'm actually trying to figure out what I like more because. Hmm. This, these are the only packs where it feels like Nightmare would be nice. Um, I feel like for these packs where it's like four to five regularly or three, I do like having misery more. Um, yeah, because like if if you only go Searing Nightmare for those packs with the little guys, there's only two of them. No, no, no. There's three of them. Well, yes, three. <laughs> because we just did one and then there's this next one coming up and then there's one on the other side of the boss that you usually do. Oh, so. Um, okay, these Reavers, they go around dotting people with poison. So that's actually something that I have forgotten a lot about in terms of hybrid classes and what they can dispel. So for Druids, I'm super familiar that they can dispel poison. However, I believe balanced Druids can only be cursed, right? I think. But, um... I'm not sure. I think monks can get poison. I know they can get disease. Yes, they can get poison because I remember I asked the monk once to dispel and plague ball for the poison debuff on the third boss. So yes, they can. If you can dispel poison, make sure you do because that dot is <laughs> again hard hitting, especially when it's at like two stacks or more. So if I have file up, I will also be using file as well. Definitely, oh, I die fuck, here fuck, fuck. <laughs> because I got NATO'd up in the air. Oh, I should have dispersed, like honestly. I, I probably had the time to disperse because I knew that I was going to die from that. And um, disperse probably would have saved me. I think I actually would have landed back on the platform. But who who knows? Like, what if I disperse and I just fucking fell off anyways? And that would be a waste. But, um, uh, yeah. I don't know. I would say Mists is also another one of those dungeons where I'm not ultra confident with my damage. Sorry. Ugh. Once in a while, I'm still coughing. Very rare, like, I don't know where it stems from, though. Mm. Oh yeah, for that volatile acid, in case people don't know, there's a circle around you. Just make sure you're not standing next to anybody, because I'm pretty sure every time it ticks, it'll deal the damage to people around you. So actually for this pull, I decided to try out Boon for my AoE. And uh, yeah, I think I wasted it mainly because I moved away from those mobs. So I had 47 stacks, I think I saw, which isn't bad. I think the final damage out from that would have been pretty decent, but I didn't stand next to them. So that kind of made that really pointless. I mean, th I think that's the main thing about Boon that I'm not too fond of when it comes to using it as shadow. Needing to be close in order for the ending AoE to hit them. Just because as a priest, um, yeah, there's times where I use fear to interrupt stuff. 
but I still feel like usually when that happens, I am running into them in order to use it. I'm never standing like Johnny on the spot. Um, but I guess another thing really is just that when I'm using Boone, I should be close and then I would end up staying close. But I guess there's still times where I'm just like only using it for the Ascended Blast. And then by the time it's almost done, I'm like, oh shit, I'm way too far. I'm not going to make it there in time. <clears throat> Oh, um, one thing I do want to mention for prides, um, I feel like I've gotten a really good, uh, I'm good at feeling out the debuff duration. Mm. So a lot of the times I try to only move I I when I have, us. when I'm in a GCD Again, or when I have an instant cast. I mean, I so stuff like... If I'm running Searing Nightmare and I need to refresh my Shadow Word Pain, then I try to use those moments to move for the balls. Or if I have a DP cast or if I have a Dark Thoughts proc. Ideally, I mean, like, it doesn't have to be entirely that way, especially if you're going to get hit and you just can't manage to make that happen. But of course, as much as you can, no unnecessary movement and only try to it's it's just maximizing dps like no loss in dps if you try to move <coughs> if you try to move in that manner oh i did pop for this okay thought i forgot <laughs> oh shit oh right and it was a late heroism that's right that's right um, also, my policy for this boss after, there was this one day, many, many, many weeks ago, I feel like it was probably months ago by now, but I was doing this 19 mists on a Tuesday right after reset, and it ended up taking us many, many tries to do this last boss because a bunch of people were taking turns dying from the green swirly drop, this thing. Wow. So... For this boss, my only priority is to never stand in that shit. Like, you, it's, it's not hard to avoid if you prioritize it. Make it your priority because that stuff will always one-shot and kill you for the most part. So, yeah. Do whatever you can. If it's going to fucking land on you, disperse. But it's, this boss really isn't that hard. It's just all about, um... Yeah, making sure that you move correctly. If you see him casting Mind Link on somebody right next to you, move ahead of time. But um, yeah, see, it. I feel like I've gotten pretty comfortable with this boss where I move very last minute. But still, um, if you're still getting used to him and you're still getting hit by that, move early and just make sure you're completely out. Don't even, don't even be near the edge of it. So I. Okay, wow. <laughs> that was that one was really late. And I was like, I'm so dead, but I'm not. I'm so good. <laughs> but um I have also been ignoring the ads for this boss. I don't really know if that's the right thing to do. But also eh, like the ads are really troublesome at times for me to switch to. Just because I could like run over and sear them. Just like really depending on where I'm standing and where I am. I feel like the rogue can easily clean them up as can the mage so i just uh i'm just like whatever i'll single target the boss get the boss down sooner but this was a pretty clean run for absolutely no comms so yeah thanks for watching